Hello and welcome to the Women's Football Show. Six matches from the weekend to bring you with plenty of goals and, of course, drama, including the two teams who have been absolutely faultless in the campaign so far. Miedemar's through on goal here. It's Vivian Miedemar. And yet, trying to find the head of two. And just like that, it bounces in. Black Stenius. And it's 1-0 to Arsenal. A really well worked goal from Manchester United. Well, to Valti, oh, caught that very nicely. Golton! Lovely goal from Frieda Martin. Big smile on her face. And it's Adriana Leon. And the home side have four. Coming up, we start with one of the two sides to take maximum points. Arsenal welcomed West Ham to Meadow Park. Meanwhile, Manchester United travelled to Merseyside to take on an Everton team who have never taken points from the Red Devils. And Tottenham visited the South Coast to face Hope Powell's third from bottom, Brighton. Well, lots to come this evening, all in the company of former England defender Laura Bassett and making his debut on the women's football show is ex-Manchester City defender Nedim Onua. So now to three-time WSL champions Arsenal, who are on the brink of breaking a new league record of 13 consecutive wins if they beat West Ham United. The Hammers aimed to maintain their form in the league and make it three wins on the bounce for the first time since late 2018. Commentary comes from Pete Mullenstein. Well, it's just the one change for Arsenal since their 2 0 win over Liverpool. Laura Wienreuter is on the bench, so Noel Moritz comes in at right back. Leah Velti and Frieda Marnham were on target last time out. Katie McCabe makes her 100th WSL appearance tonight. Viviana Miedemar once again has to settle for a place on the bench. Paul Koncheski makes two changes to his West Ham side who beat Reading in their last Women's Super League game. Mackenzie Arnold is injured, so the 19-year-old Sophie Hilliard makes her full West Ham debut in goal. Abby Lee Stringer returns in midfield as the former Arsenal youngster Mel Felis drops to the bench. West Ham only able to name five outfield players as their substitutes. Berger under pressure by Asayi and it will be a West Ham corner and Zinsberger is furious well I don't think it took a touch from Asayi corner to the visitors decent delivery bring your dot is there again and it won't count because the referee blew a whistle must have seen something in the build-up to that. Well, there didn't seem to be too much in there. Ball intercepted. Mayashi, now Brynjols Dottir, poor touch from Brynjols Dottir. Oh, it's an oh, it's off the post, and Brynjols Dottir gets it over the line. What a mess from Arsenal. Architects of their own downfall there. All Dangi Brynjels Dotti had to do was make sure it got over the line, and she did just that. It's her fifth goal in five games, and West Ham, who've been under quite a bit of Arsenal pressure, lead. Catley and Zinsberger just misreading each other, came off the post. Brynjels Dotti just had to make sure. Ford. Looking to release Black Stenius. Shimizu couldn't get there. Stenius allowed to keep going. Beth Mead. Beth Mead again, making her way through. Gets the shot, and it's a great save from Hilliard to deny Beth Mead. She did well to get the shot away. She was being closed down by a couple of those West Ham players. Well, this doesn't look too good. For well, the Arsenal captain, Kim Little, who is being helped off the pitch. Marnham tries to cut it back and into the side netting it goes. And it's another corner for Arsenal, who are desperately looking for a response to going a goal down. Delivery comes in. 
Back in it goes by Nobbs. Well, she's only been on the pitch a matter of minutes. And Jordan Nobbs gets Arsenal level right before the break. They needed a response to that West Ham opener. And it's Jordan Nobbs who makes it 1-1. Longhurst. That's definitely a foul. Holding back Frieda Marnham and Kate Longhurst gets herself a yellow card. And just holding back Frieda Marnham as she was trying to come forward. Well, Steph Catley or Beth Mead, the two players, ready to take this free kick for Arsenal. Catley with the delivery, headed on, and it's touched in by Black Stenius. They had to come from behind, but Arsenal lead. It was a great free kick delivery, and Stina Black Stenius was there to tap it in to make it 2 1. Great goal. Marnham with that searching ball over to find Black Stenius. Tries to turn, Fisk is behind her. Jordan Nobbs placing it through to Caitlin Ford. Wasn't the best touch, has to go through to Katie McCabe. The head is there and the goal's there too. And it's Frieda Marnham who's in amongst the goals again for Arsenal. And they are well and truly in control of this London derby now. Well, it was great work from Stina Blackstenius to keep this opportunity alive. Just about holding a line there, Caitlin Ford. McCabe with a brilliant delivery. And all Frieda Mardum had to do was make sure it found the back of the net. A great header, sending it way past Sophie Hilliard. 3-1 to Arsenal, back in control. Headed away by Wubben Moy, back out it goes to... Phyllis, who will try and take the shot. Brynjus Dotter does one, and it's a decent effort too. Punched away by Zinsberger. She had to be onto that, Zinsberger. Brynjus Dotter with a great strike. Good height, though, for Zinsberger to save it, and she needed to. Fisk with the header forward. Picked up now by Marnham, and also could be away. Hurtig! Marnham hits the crossbar. Well, that would have really been the cherry on top of the cake for Arsenal had this gone in. Great run by Marnham, placed it across to Hurtig, but it needed a big save, rattled off the crossbar. Full-time, Arsenal in the history books. That 3-1 victory over West Ham has seen the Gunners break the record for the longest winning streak ever in the Women's Super League with 13 wins on the bounce. At full-time, it's Arsenal 3, West Ham 1. Every game is difficult to win, so win 13 in a row, it's, it's obviously very difficult. Uh, so that is a, a big and, and huge achievement uh, and happy for that. But it comes from preparing and performing in each one of those games, so we keep on pushing. For us that goal should stand and, and, and Dagny obviously came over and, and, and weren't happy herself. So listen, you, sometimes you get, you get them, them um, decisions and sometimes you don't. We, we didn't get today and... It could have cost us, it, uh, cost us at the end. Laura, Arsenal with the win there. And you heard Jonas allude to it. 13 wins in a row, a WSL record. Like, give us some context, because that's not an easy thing to do. He said one game is hard, but 13 in a row, that is really tough. Yeah, it's incredible. Just the motivation of a group, you know. Every game, like you were saying, every game's different, different challenges, different opposition. But the motivation, the competition to keep going... Um, yeah, you're just like a well-oiled machine and all credit to the whole 
you know, squad, the players, the backroom staff, that's a big joint effort, so huge credit should be given. Nearly not for them, though. Shaky start. West Ham started really well, Nadem. <laughs> yeah, that, that is right. And usually Arsenal do come out of the traps really well. But in fairness to West Ham, they did put them under pressure. And Arsenal, they seemed just a little bit off. And I think the goal that West Ham scored, you know, they believe that they deserved it. But unfortunately, it seems to bring out the, uh, the best versions of Arsenal shortly after that. Yeah, let's take a look at that disallowed goal, because that could have changed the whole tone mm. of the game, perhaps. Yeah, as we saw it in real time, we thought well, there must be a foul in there. But as you look at it, Brynja's Dottie, has not really, she's not really done anything. But I think the referee looking at somebody laying on the floor, you've got to ask yourself the question, how did somebody get there? I think she's believed that there must have been something bad that's happened. But as you look again, that's nothing. And if they're going to give him, give him free kicks for that, you've got no chance really, have you? Yeah. And then, of course, the goal itself. Mm. Poor decision-making from Catley for gifting West Ham that initial goal. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a mistake from Catley, but then it's also a mistake from the goalkeeper, Zinsberger, because maybe she should have communicated better. Mm. But then Catley probably thought maybe she got away with it because it's hit the post, but lo and behold, it, it, it drops to Brynja's daughter. And uh, I think even I could possibly score from there. <laughs> but, you know, this is it. Mistakes will cost you. I think luckily yeah. for Arsenal, they have the depth that you mentioned before to be able to come out of these situations. Yeah. And then, Laura, we now got the curious case of Jordan Nobbs. When she's on it, she's glorious, isn't she? She's just so good to watch, so good to be on that pitch and so impactful for that team. Yeah. I mean, firstly, I hope that Kim Little's OK and she's not out for too long. But Jordan coming on there, I think this goal was with her second touch. I think she had a shot before this that got blocked. But the arrival, the power, the precision, her approach play, look, she's already moving her feet, adjusting, seeing where it's going to land and that I mean she scored a fabulous goal in midweek um, for Champions League but that to have that impact so quickly coming on you know all credit to it yeah fantastic goal and you can see just how much it meant to her the celebrations alone but then let's look at this after that Arsenal settled right into their groove as we expected the team have been absolutely awful in the season yeah I mean from, from set pieces a wide free kick Steph Catley McCabe for the third goal but I mean this from Black Stenius, you know she's going to be a target player. She's unmarked, you know, a, a quality finish. And then this third one, again, from the other side, left footed deliveries from McCabe and Catley are just sublime. They just put it in an area, come and attack it, come and put it in the back of the net, and that's what they do. Yeah, and I would I've got to say as well, Catley made the mistake for the first goal. And she, she comes back with an assist. I think it shows the sort of depth and sort of mentality and ability that the manager was speaking about before as well. Nice, no, brilliant. Brilliant to watch Arsenal. Well done to them. But next, the title challenges Manchester United looking for their fifth clean sheet this season. Up against an Everton side looking to make it four wins in five. Your commentary comes from Robin Cowan and Rachel Brown Finnis. For Everton, two changes from the 11 that beat Aston Villa last weekend in the WSL. Claire Wheeler comes into the midfield for Karen Homegaard, who drops to the bench. Chelsea Loney, Aggie Beaver-Jones starts for the second time this season after scoring her first goal for Everton in the midweek Continental Cup win. One change for Manchester United from their 1-0 win over Leicester. Hayley Ladd returns in place of Lucy Staniforth in midfield. Ona Badia is still out following concussion protocols, so Maria torres here keeps her place in the defence. Nikita Paris leads the line again after scoring the winner last weekend. Alessia Russo, who's missed the last four due to injury, is fit enough to be named among the substitutes. It's Millie Turner. Closing in on Mary Earps, but Katie Zellen provides the option and they're out once again. Excellent, calm, slick play through the back line. Again, they're going direct, Manchester United. Garcia into tune. A really good save from Brosnan. Well, with the numbers of Manchester United players flooding forward, seemingly completely unmarked, and Ella Toon pulls a good save out of Wortley Brosnan. Here comes the cross for Golton, teeing up Paris. And that's 1-0 for Manchester United. Nikita Paris with back-to-back -back goals for her new club. They've been threatening and now they have their goal. 1-0 to the visitors. Time after time after time, Manchester United get the ball forwards far too easily. No pressure on the ball for the ball fl flighted in. Looks like Meg Finnegan doesn't get a shout and it's the simplest of finishes, but there looks to be some discord, lack of communication across the back line for Everton. And Nikita Paris accepts the gift. The 
This is promising. Gabby George galloping away. Loads of options in the middle. Gabby George goes for goal. Decent save from Erbs. The angle was tight. Gabby George, former Manchester United Academy player. What a run, eh? Down that left-hand side. Does she pick the right option? She makes Mary out make an excellent save. Ryan Sorensen will be much more pleased. George, good first touch, pulls it back. Beaver Jones turns, blocked, and away. A couple of appeals for handball. There were immediate shouts for handball from a few Everton players. See, good turn from Maggie Beaver Jones, and it does pop up and hit the arm of Hannah Blundell, but because it's come off of the foot, no penalty. Everton trying to press high. Really impressive once again from Manchester United, and they're out. And they are outnumbering Everton, Paris. To Ella Toon, deflection just wide. And that's precisely why Manchester United employ that tactic, playing out the back and look, it's four on two. Nikita Paris picks it up deep, runs with it, slides it out, just really should have been ahead of Ella Toon, and then Ella Toon could have had the option of a strike or two players in the box to pick out. Real textbook play off of the training pitch, that. Bit of space here, though, for Leah Goldson. Lovely feet, Goldson still going! Lovely goal! No one got close to her. And Leah Goldson punishes Everton and gives Manchester United a two-goal lead now. See here, it's a turnover of possession in the midfield, no pressure on the ball again, just nobody stepping towards Leah Gollan inside the box, and she just picks the spot. Really clinical, good, composed finish from Leah Galton. But defensively, Everton will be hugely disappointed with that. Paris, Garcia. Chance, and the third goal, Hayley Ladd. Guides Manchester United into a commanding lead here. And that should be the three points for Manchester United. Fabulous goal from Hayley Ladd. This is a really well-crafted finish. Just used the ball, nurtured, crafted the ball into that top corner and carved out an emphatic scoreline for Manchester United. That's nice play, though, from Seuss. Finding home guard. Home guard still going. Brilliant save by Earps. She just won't be beaten. Full time, then. Manchester United march on. A fifth straight victory to start the WSL season. Full time at Walton Hall Park. Everton nil, Manchester United three. Everton are a team that possess the ball, so you have to be together as one unit. And so if we're covering spaces at the right times, pressing at the right times, I was really, really pleased with them. We need to put more than uh, 25 minutes of, of good football together to beat a, a strong team like United. So, uh, yeah, disappointed, I think. Uh, but it's probably where we are in the process. We need to, yeah, we need to still learn and also the players need to learn each other when we get into bad periods, how we, you know, how we stay on top of that. It's been a tough week, um, as every team has experienced a three-game week, but to finish it the way we have, I'm so pleased with the group. Well, Laura, the unbeaten run continues there for Manchester United. So put together, so well organised as a team. What is that about this season in particular? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, you know, everyone will talk about their goals and the different goal scorers and how many they've got on the goal sheet. But I think also clean sheets. Mm. And we've seen Mary Earp, you know, she epitomises the, the, the defending side of it, out of possession. She keeps everyone on song. But, yeah, to keep mm. clean sheets and not concede the goal after five games is a huge cr credit to the whole team. But it's just where their mindset's at. Well, let's take a look at some of these goals, Nadine, because they are impressive. As yes. Laura said, they've got depth when it comes down to their goal scorers. 
But in fairness, though, with this one, I think this is a mistake from Everton because they've just allowed Nikita Paris to have time and the two defenders, you can see, they're kind of watching the ball. So before you know it, there's a mistake in terms of communication here. And then she's got a tap in. It's because she's staying alert. And with this one here, with Hayley Ladd, like this ball here, that's, that's sheer quality. To be able to get on the half turn, see where the right pass is, and not only see it, but be able to play it, it changes the tempo within the game. Before you know it, you've got your players running at the defence. And I think for Everton, again, here, if you've got four players near one, you shouldn't really let them have a shot off. But she got it away, found the bottom corner, and these are, these are big moments. And even with this one here, for Everton, you probably think that you're a bit unlucky because there's a little ricochet, but yeah. Hayley Ladd steps up, and what a finish this is. This is the type of stuff <laughs> I would dream about. A ball rolls through on the edge of the box. Can I just send it there? I absolutely could not for my career, but that, that just kind of shows how good she is of a player. Yeah, and um, Hayley Ladd. Having said that, you know, player of the match, she, she's on fire, she looks fantastic, Laura, and what we're seeing here is somebody who cannot allow any space at all. Yeah, I think, I think her and Hayley, um, Katie Zellum deserve huge credit for this game, what they did in and out of possession. But I think, like you say, just Hayley Ladd keeping the ball moving forward, the way to pass. Hannah Blundell plays it out, but again, she's under severe pressure. This is really hard to shrug off a defender, play the ball forward with the, the, the attacking talent that Man United have. Keep feeding the forwards. And again, she, it, you don't have to be a 40-yard ball. It can keep it simple. Be available, be open, keep moving. You know, just sometimes the simplicity mm. is the most difficult thing, but she's calm. And here, you know, like we've already explained, the, the finish. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, a bit, like the, a bit like the Jordan Nobbs finish, yeah. you know, arriving that time and then, you know, picking the type of finish that you're going to use. But I thought Hayley Ladd and Katie Zellan worked really well. Both sides of the game, they were really good for Manchester United today. Yeah, and in terms of Everton themselves, look, they, they, they have to have some positives to take away from this particular game, Nadam. Yeah, I think anyone who's seen from the highlights, they did have a few chances. And I think there is a sense of disappointment that they have lost 3 0. But the fact is, I think they're just in a better position overall there's more stability within that and the players can see what their manager is building mm. I think for them that's going to be a huge positive as the season progresses okay well up next Tottenham they visited the south coast to face Brighton both teams in search of momentum following losses last weekend ahead of this we spoke to Seagulls defender Poppy Pattinson in her first season at the club since signing in the summer as a fullback you've got to say you're a defender at the end of the day obviously a clean sheet is what we want that's the basics at some points you are exposed. You have literally got one player in front of you and it's your job to defend them. Mead. It's possessed. Great challenge by Pattinson. You want to get there as quick as possible, but slow down, decelerate, get low, try and show them one way and then ultimately dictate what they're going to do. You can't be nice in football. Of, of course you have friends off the pitch, but on the pitch, no one's your friend. You've got to go into every tackle 100% and, and win that ball. Tactically, I think wingers are tricky these days. They come inside, they go outside. You've got a 10 in the pocket in front of you, so I think it's a, a big about the communication. Centre-back, obviously they're the ones next to us. They can slide across and, and screen behind us if we release to press the winger. And then likewise, I give communication to the winger in front of me to, to screen my player in the pocket, so left, right. But yeah, it's about timing of arriving on their first touch, or if you can't affect the ball, then stay in your position and hold. I think in terms of building relationships with players, it, it takes time, um, but definitely within training and, and the games we've played so far, definitely that's starting to come, and, and naturally we get used to each other. Off the pitch, we, we make good relationships as well, so that communication comes on the pitch too, um, and that helps a lot on weekends. If you don't get the result you want, it's definitely challenging. We all feel it. Me, I, I love to win. If I don't win, then obviously I, I'm not happy. But it's about picking yourself up and, and going again. And yeah, definitely that's, that's a challenge, but a challenge is what we love. I think the league's only getting bigger and better. It's attracting bigger players. People are improving within that. Um, so it's only going to get more challenging facing these wingers. But yeah, it's something I'm looking forward to. Spurs with only three goals in their opening four games so far this season. The corner's played short to Bar Trip, and she finds the finish. What a start! Molly Bar Trip in the second minute, and she swirled that shot high over Megan Walsh. Summoned. 
Oh, she's under pressure from Olme in the back heel. Will release Olme, and that's a fine save by Corpola. And it's a warning as well for Spurs. Back pass from Kohlberg. Oh, Walsh could be in trouble here. She is, and it's 2 0. And it's a first Tottenham goal for Kazuska. And a nightmare for the goalkeeper. But the Polish international alert to the possibilities. And the corner is flicked on to Neville. What a finish! 3 0 to Spurs. And they've doubled their goal scoring tally this season within half an hour. That's a brilliant goal. Williams with the clearance. So it's been one way traffic, lovely back heel there from Neville. And here is Drew Spence beyond Williams, it's 4 0. And Drew Spence. Not known for a goal scoring, but you wouldn't know it there. Cleverly done by Neville. And Spence did the rest. Naz. Here is Spence. Now Naz again. And Tottenham here causing problems every time they come forward. Hildesoy's cross and Neville with a commanding header to make it five. Well, Ashley Neville really can be a force of nature at times. And she was there. That's another superb goal. And Naz has got the pace from the bench to really concern Brighton. Williams has been drawn out of the centre. Here is Neville. Spence is lurking. And Spence gets her second. And Tottenham sixth. Well, this is incredible. Ashley Neville with a second assist for Drew Spence. And Brighton can't live with them. And they kick off yet again. Williams, but it's quickly won back by Cho. And here is now she goes for it, and she gets it. Jessica Naz, it's 7-0. Straight from the kickoff. That's a great piece of improvisation and quick thinking. Marley with the throw in. Naz, Williams with an interception, but Cho will find Naz again! 8 0. Jessica Naz has her second now. The record away win in the Women's Super League is 9 0. You may remember Chelsea did that last season against Leicester most recently. And Tottenham, a goal away from equaling that, and it could be here. Here is Spence. Walsh makes the save. Ayan. Walsh denies her. And that's it. Tottenham have to settle for eight in the end. A great day for them, but it's been an awful time for Hope Powell and the Seagulls. It's really tough to take, actually. We're very, very disappointed, um, slightly embarrassed, I would say. I think uh, we'd like to apologise to the fans, actually. Today we weren't good enough, and I think we, we got, you know, we got everything we deserve. We've not maybe given a good, a good enough account of ourselves in front of goal so far this season. We've been disappointed with that, but we've definitely got the quality to be able to obviously create problems. And uh, it was a big focus for us today. And I think when you get the out of possession stuff right, you know, it's a platform to build from, but you've also got to put the ball in the back of the net. And I think, you know, I'm delighted with the fact that we've got obviously goal scorers, different goal scorers today as well. Uh, Laura, you heard Hope Powell say there, embarrassing, quite a hard one to take for that Brighton team, but absolute dominance from Spurs. Yeah, that's right. Straight from the first, I think they scored in the second minute, didn't they? They were very dominant from set pieces. They looked together, they looked hungry, um, and they just scored at crucial times. Whenever Brighton were trying to get into the game, you know, it was a mistake 
and Tottenham got back on top. So huge lessons for, for both sides today. But yeah, I mean, Tottenham only scored 24 goals in the whole of last season. So the fact they scored eight today, yeah. you know, it's incredible. It's a third, a third of all their goals from last season. But Molly Bartrip, like we said, first goal of the game, her first WSL goal as well. Yeah, really disappointed from a Brighton perspective, not you know, to be done on a short corner. But I think opportunistic Molly Bartrip sees it, the space. You know, she knows where to hit it. I think Meg Walsh maybe gets travelled an awful long way. Mm. She can do a little bit better, but it's a great strike. Um, Ashley Neville, someone whose name has been popping up mm. in um, England conversations. Two assists, two goals today. Mm. Realistic prospect, perhaps? You never show about realistic, but she certainly is playing well. Yeah. I think in, with the goals that she scored and the assist, you can see she's got the confidence and she looks like she knows exactly what her role is within the side. And this finish here, left foot half on the volley first time, is incredible. That is such a good finish because from there, myself included, I'd probably take a touch, but instead she sends it into the, <laughs> into the side net. And this back heel, that's so saucy, I'll be honest with you. Like, that's, that's, that's so saucy. That's a, that's a great assist. It's a great yeah. finish as well. And then, as I say, she just has a continual impact within the game, which is what you want from people who are playing up there. And I think you made the point there, the goalkeeper, goalkeeper should probably do better. But the fact is, you still need to be in there to be able to um, capitalise on the opportunity, and she certainly did do that. And then here as well, she's not shy of taking people on and just going and really taking it as a defender. And I don't know if you're the same as me, but I prefer if people just stood off me and never ran straight at me. But that's what she's doing there. She had such a huge impact. And her being responsible for half of the goals isn't too bad a, bad a day, is it? How do you feel about Brighton's defending in this game, though, Laura? What, <laughs> for you, what, you know, where, where did they go? Well, eight goals, is that is a significant scoreline. You know, defenders have to take some accountability for that. Yeah, that's right. And I'm really surprised, actually, because, you know, their game against Chelsea last week, they were stifling, they were hard to beat. They, yeah. got, they were actually a high line, got the press right. Um, and they looked together, compact a unit. Mm. And it was the complete opposite. I felt that m mentality wise, they didn't recover from mistakes or going down so you know, early on. Um, and I think it was an honest reflection from Hope Powell. And I think, you know, uh, again, they've got to look at themselves, yeah. regroup, grow, learn together. Um, it will hurt, but you know, you've got another game to bounce back. I know as defenders, guys, when it's relentless like that, what do you do? <laughs> just, hold the, just blow the whistle around. Please just blow, just blow the whistle. The whistle. <laughs> Help us all out. <laughs> Well, now to round up the remaining three fixtures, starting with the bottom of the table clash. Reading and Leicester both have failed to pick up any points so far. Will we see the first draw of the season? Talking us through the best of the action is Flo Pollock. Reading had the better of the early play against Leicester on Sunday, but failed to make a decisive breakthrough. When the opening goal eventually came, it was from the visitors. Natasha Flynn clinically finishing off a swift counter-attack. Reading showed fight throughout the contest and finally levelled on the 90th minute. Rachel Rose in swinging corner, evading everyone to find the back of the net. The hosts weren't done yet though, and they broke Leicester Hart in stoppage time. Rowe with a thunderous strike to claim her second and secure a dramatic win for Kelly Chambers' side. Overall, I think we, we got what we deserved in terms of the win. I think we were the better the team over the, across the 90 minutes. And um, I said to the girls, we've got to be patient. I went in at half time and just said, look, we are where we are right now. But like we've been the better team. We've got to be patient and our opportunities will come. And to be fair to them, they, they kept going. I knew we'd fight till the end. And I said, regardless of a performance, what it's about is finding a way to win today. And they've done that. Chelsea had won all four of their WSL meetings against Aston Villa without conceding a goal and went ahead against their visitors midway through the first half. Lauren James bursting past Rachel Corsi before arrowing her strike into the far corner. Villa grew into the game and made their hosts pay for a series of missed chances. Rachel Daly quickest to latch onto Sarah Mailing's teasing cross to leave the match finely poised at the interval. Chelsea restored their advantage two minutes into the second half. James linking up with Penilla Harder before rounding Maz Pacheco and firing past Anneli in the Villa goal. James then added an assist to her goals with her pass giving Sam Kerr the opportunity to guarantee all three points for the Blues. Yeah, for Aston Villa made it really difficult for us. Um, in the first, particularly in the first half, before we, we got off to a good start through Lauren with a great goal. 
Uh, Villa came back into it, deserved the equaliser, and at half time, you know, we, we knew we needed to step up in the second half to get the three points, and I felt the team did that and uh, were well worthy winners in the end. Liverpool had lost their last three WSL matches against Manchester City and found themselves trailing after 21 minutes. Lauren Hemp with the through ball, in form Khadija Shaw with the controlled finish. The visitors may be on a three-game losing streak in the league, but they were never out of this contest. And when Alex Greenwood gave away possession to Katie Stengel, the American striker pounced to draw Matt Beard's side level. City responded well after the break, and if not for a crucial goal line clearance from Megan Campbell, could have made it two. Hemp inches away from her third goal of the season. But moments later, the hosts did retake the lead. Hayley Rasso firing past Rachel Laws at the second attempt, just six minutes after coming on as a substitute. Liverpool almost equalised in stoppage time, but Rhiannon Roberts' header was scrambled clear by Greenwood to secure a third league victory in a row for City. It wasn't one of our greatest performances. I thought we started the game really well. First half an hour, we were good, scored a brilliant goal. Could have had potentially more. I thought that um, we give away a real sloppy goal and the warning signs were there a little bit because they're aggressive, Liverpool. After that, it rocked us a little bit. It took us a while to kind of find our feet. Battled really hard in the second half. We knew we'd get chances against them. It was uh, a bit topsy-turvy today. Uh, really pleased with the three points. Shows really good character in this team. So, uh, as always, very busy Sunday. Reading, though, two clutch goals there in added time. They're going to want to keep that momentum, though, Laura, aren't they? Yeah, they will. And it really unlucky. I think it was a really tight, cagey game. Um, good goal by Leicester on the counter-attack. But I think, you know, to... If, if anyone's going to epitomise Redden, it's going to be Rachel Rove. You know, she's such a technically gifted player. She's been through the good times and bad times with Redden over the years. And I think, you know, she's got the belief. She knows how to execute and produce in those big moments. So, yeah, they'll certainly be hoping. I think the performance has been there. So they'll certainly be hoping that it kickstarts them off for the season now. Man City next, though, Laura. What's the yeah. problem, you know? <laughs> Those blues especially, you know. <laughs> Always get in the way. <laughs> um, Chelsea, speaking of blues, the other blues, Lauren James, you know, she's really coming into her own now. She looked really good today. And it's good to see her finally flourishing in that space. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think sometimes you forget how young she is. You know, mm. she feels like she's been around the scene for so long. But the quality you saw today with the dynamism, the finishing, the passing, like, she's an incredible talent. You just think the, you know, the sky's going to be the limit for her. That's what we're hoping. Bunny Shaw or Khadija Shaw. I should call her Khadija. I know Bunny, but Khadija Shaw, look, she's really, really flying this season as well in terms of her goals. Top goal scorer for the league. Looking really good as well. Yeah, she is. And what I've been impressed with the most is the types of different finishes. You know, outside the box, inside the box, calm fi finishes in the corners, headed goals. So she's got the array. She just feels, it looks like she's enjoy enjoying being that focal number nine, first choice, and, and the stats are backing it up. Barney Shaw. But when we think about Leicester now, we can go back to them. In terms of what they're going to have to do differently here, Nadem, to be able to try and really just lift themselves up out of this, this bunker, you know, what are they going to have to try and do? Do you know, football is such a tough, tough game. I think every team goes into the week thinking that they can figure out the solution to the problems they had on the weekend. But sometimes, you know, it's about the belief and just a bit of good fortune. Something may be going your way. Maybe somebody doesn't take a chance against you in a game where you may be under a bit of pressure. But... For them, they have to keep the belief, they have to keep trying to work hard and making sure that they get better and not get worse based on the results that they're having. I think if they do that, they'll be all right. OK, well, let's take a look at the Barclays Women's Super League table. Manchester United take the top spot, but only on goal difference. Arsenal and Chelsea are also on 15 points. Manchester City, they're up to fourth, and Tottenham climb to fifth thanks to their thumping of Brighton. Reading's late drama takes them off the bottom and into ninth, and Leicester are still in search for their first points of the season. In the Barclays Championship today, newly promoted Southampton hosted Sunderland at St Mary's. The Saints extended their unbeaten run to six with a 1-0 victory. Ella Pusey's finish in the 58th minute sealed all three points. Elsewhere in the championship, Bristol will keep their unbeaten start with a 2-0 win over Charlton. Birmingham City are back to winning ways thanks to a 97th minute winner from Lucy Quinn. Lewis and Crystal Palace both with 1-0 away wins, nothing to separate London City and Blackburn. 
And the table looks like this now. Bristol City, they lead the line with London City and Southampton breathing down their necks. Birmingham, they jump up to six. Their Sheffield United drop three places down to ninth. And Coventry still in search for their first points of the season. Coming up on the BBC, the Women's Rugby League World Cup starts on Tuesday with England against Brazil. Live coverage of that starts at 1.45pm on BBC Two. And to give you a bit of insight into the England Rugby League team, head to the iPlayer for Women of Steel, which follows them around ahead of the tournament. Also available on the iPlayer, son of footballing royalty, Callum Best. He's taken on a new challenge. He's the chairman of Dorking Wanderers Women. They've allowed cameras behind the scenes for squad goals. I'm here to see what we can do with this club. Our aim is to win yeah. the league and get promoted. I do find it hard juggling the football and the work. Come on! To bring it home, you have to start somewhere. Squad goals. Watch on BBC iPlayer. Interesting. You fancy that, Nadem? No, no, I can't say I do. <laughs> I can't say I do, but... Other things are meant for me, and I've very much enjoyed this today. Well, I'm glad you're here with us today. I hope you've enjoyed it. But Manchester City, Chelsea next week, that's going to be the big game, isn't it? Yeah, really. Well, you know, will we, will we see United concede a goal? But that's certainly one for the popcorn. I think he's, <laughs> he's cheering for Chelsea, that's for sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I'm not going to say word, but yes. Well, Nadine, Laura, thank you so much. That's all we've got time for. Thank you for joining us. What well, a weekend of football, plenty of goals and late drama. Manchester United lead the title race, but Arsenal right behind them. We'll see you next week. Jordan North gets Arsenal level. Arsenal in the history books. 13 wins on the bounce. Lovely beat, Golden still going. Manchester United march on.